Hello and welcome to game three of Scruffy vs. Atlanta. It is currently 2-0 for Scruffy. Atlanta trying to come back, going for his Ajari build against Mala. Scruffy going for his regular expand first. But Atlanta doing the same. And Atlanta might have some cheeky builds if he wants to come back into this series. Teapot simply going around the map. Going all the way to the opponent's base. Teapot sees everything. Sees the one ether. One ether on both sides. And some type of bush may be coming soon. There's some very powerful bushes with the with the absorbers on this map specifically. We'll see if it comes out of that, and very well might. Itlander sending out his first mode. Might just be putting the Legion Hall a bit forward. Here we go. A bit forward, protected at a tower, but means reinforcement come that much quicker to his opponent's base. Of course, something Aru cannot do, as all their builds need to be on Rootway. So a small advantage for a red player, red Ajari player here. Of course, Scruffy did win his first map playing Zol. Sam will try the same with Mala. Okay, free Sipari coming out. Sipari pretty equivalent to Zentari, a bit faster than the Swordsmen. These Spearmen instead have a bit of added speed and can attack from one behind each other at all times. They have a range a bit above one. So a bit like you would see in normal Spear formations where the Spearmen at the front have their shield and the ones at the back can still attack. Oh, might want to kill that Teapot, but the Teapot is a fast runner, does not get caught out. And the Pyro Camp, Thunder going for it. Scruffy coming, coming to help contest it. That uh, might be too little too late though, as Itlander can kill it fairly quickly with these uh, Sipari. Just be careful of the teapot though. Yeah, he does not want it to uh, try and juke it in. Will he get it? He does get it. The teapot steals the steals steals the pyre here. And Scruffy only spending one teapot, doesn't even lose it, gets it and gets a teapot on top of getting a bit slower and everything else. Great move from him, Itlander. Will not be happy with that. And behind this, going for an absolver. So big absolver. Absolver push with those, with those Sipari. And will Scruffy be able to get both Pyro Camps on top of it? Uh, Itlander coming in, will be a bit behind. And oh, was trying to do the same trick as opponent did, but will not work for him. Or might very well, the Sipari are strong and powerful. Coming from behind and get the first kill. Ooh, he will be able to steal the power from his opponent. Of course, neither of them really want to attack the Elder right now. We'll prefer to attack each other to not lose any unit. Or wants to move back that weaker one, and he does. At this point, they're both fighting their hearts out. And at the, with the top of the hill secure from Atlander, Scruffy has nothing to do but to retreat, and they equal out the Pyro count. Both of them stealing one from the, from each other. And sending his units back to heal. Their side, here comes. Units are coming out. The uh, Absolvers is ready. Uh, the second... Okay, I'm not sure. The second Aether was not taken at the same time, so a bit later, 100 later. Exactly. If you take him one after the other, it's only about 25. So a bit later, getting absolvers out a bit quicker to get that push up and running. And the residents are almost out though. So Lander will have the units to counter this push. Lander's not mine too much. He's going for fast push. Oh, that's very cute. Using the, the red harvest to get those quiddles out as soon as possible. Every unit that dies under the spell turns into quiddle and helps with the next attack. And allies or enemies. Mm, Scruffy slowed down the push, but used up all his power for Lander. Well, it was good, right? It was able to get the Resonance out, at least. So this push might be much harder to come into. Okay, here it comes. Resonance does not have to upgrade for the Siege up just yet. Now he gets it, and they will start attacking. Hitler needs to stay out of position. So be very careful to keep his Absolvers out of range of those Resonance. Resonance moving slowly. Oh, man. Oh, that last shot, getting that Absolver at the very last moment. Perfect when Scruffy, keeping all his units alive there. Used a bit of power, but did not lose his base or anything important. His opponent did lose that that expensive absorber. Sad note coming out in case his opponent is going is heading for frums. But Scruffy has not been that type of player so far. He's been very concentrated on the very meat and potatoes units, just mass hunters and resonants. Units that deal well with most composition, able to attack air and have a good zone control and dislodgement power. 
uh, Itliner behind this, sending out a troop for the counterattack. Third base is going out for both sides. Ow. Sentinel out. Itliner. Tender side. Scruffy, more and more resonance. And Mass Hunters. Mass Hunters have their offering ability to uh, jump on units, extra attack speed and movement speed. Really get some damage on their opponents. And yeah, okay, those four supply were only to get that power camp. It's now taken. Lander has a lot of power. So he can use pretty much any ability he wants for the next attack. Could use Salvation, which resurrects all, dead all of his own dead units for the next fight. Very powerful for any type of engagement coming up. It's a volatile resin. Getting in the right position. Uh, he might want to move out soon, but not quite yet. Here comes the bone canopy to get those air units if ever he needs them. Wait, is that a deep nest? He's heading for. Okay, it might be the deep nest. He's he wants those behemoths faster rather than later. And what is Atlanta going for? He's heading for those wardens. Wardens, quick. Quick air hitter units really jump on stuff, especially if Scruffy is not in the right position, which he might not be at this point. So he might have seen the Wardens. So I, okay, he's going to attack here. Uh, Scruffy sees this. He can just jump on those resins, but of course, it's you do not have vision of your opponent, so you don't really know what you're supposed to do. Look, the air over is now out. There's nothing left for it later to attack into. Powerful resonance. Teapot going all the way around. Alright, fourth base coming in. So Atlanta not preparing for some type of big attack. Is he teching up to something specific? Not quite yet. He does have two angel arms, so could go for a lot of air units if he so desires. And wardens are very quick for those area for those aerial attacks. Both of them just respecting really each other a lot. Don't want to overcommit to any fight or catch your opponent too far off guard. Pretty unique composition with very little anti-air, but this opponent does not have much air units. As I say, as the behemoths come out and you need something to kill those. As two more bone can because I'm out. Scruffy really aiming for that big late game army. Uh, those four resins might just be enough to defend most anything. Hornets want to jump on those resonants and kill them, but won't be possible at this time. 300 power is a lot for it, Lander. Sephari was stopping that base from going down. So if he keeps his uh, symbiote alive, symbiote goes past the base, ready to put it up. I do like this faster first baseman ladder. It is done while Scruffy's is just now starting. Gives him a good eco advantage if he doesn't have the tech advantage. Uh, but he doesn't really need the tech advantage. Look at the army value. Uh, Scruffy's just adding on right now. A bone capy with a lot of behemoths. Aerox to deal with any air units. Ooh, but catching this army is great. They're not the super expensive, but you, it's always good to get some free kills like this on a run by deck. Could always happen a bit later. Not many units left, but not worth keep going forward after this. Uh, the defenses are up. If type you try to step too far forward, you might just die. Now, teapot looking for some stuff. On uh, the east side, here comes the Sapari coming forward. Uh, there's some power on those resonance. Looking all the way around, Atlanta really has been expanding like crazy, getting his fifth base before his opponent. 
Uh, Scruffy opting for a base that's a bit closer for his fourth as the third did get taken out by those four Sipari. In opposition here, Atlander really looking to come back into this. Big army, of course, getting rid of those behemoths might be the big question here. The, the Dread Sisters are out. And great for all those early engagements as well. Oh, two Mass Hunters survive. Of course, with four modes, you might be able to take it out, but doesn't want to risk it. His Safari are nearby. We'll take care of it. <laughs> These Safari, however, are taken out very quickly by those Resonance. Teapot detects his base, and Scruffy still playing very defensive, building what he believes to be his ultimate army. It's coming slowly but surely. Ooh, 144 supply is a big jump for Scruffy here. Yeah, I just decided to make a bunch of mass hunters. And is this the time Atlander decides to go for a 230 pyre? It's a huge amount. And Resonance. Yeah, Resonance are still deployed. They are respecting each other way too much in this game. There's a few skirmishes here and there, but no big, big, uh, big, big attack. Ooh, here comes the Mass Hunters to the north. Okay, I like this. Keep your opponents on their guards, making them attack two places at once. I love this tower placement. It gives him a good vision. Uh, but he has enough enough wardens to deal with this. However, Scruffy is taking the right position, moving forward slowly but surely. Uh, Teapot of the north might have detected this, uh, but this attack is coming. There's a lot of units though for Atlander. Who will win this fight? It might be the beginning of the game. Both of them have enough power to use any of their abilities if they want to. Absolver, shoot, shoot an egg crazy. Resonance at the back. Deploying a bit late, getting a bit late to the party, but they are deployed and ready to go for the push. At the back here, the wardens were able to take care of everything. Only one went down, it seems. Though. No, they're all here. And engagement coming forward. Here comes the unit. Resonance attacking into those, using his swords to god it. And the battle is going like crazy. The resonance shooting from afar. The absolvers keeping the units at bay. And at this point, it does seem like Scruffy has a slight lead. Neither of them still choose their pyre abilities. Uh, tower here gotta be careful not to attack into it and scruffy does not really want to keep engaging but but scruffy feel uh Atlander feels the pressure goes for an immortal spell jumps onto the off of it as the resonance are not sieged up and yeah maybe overcommitted a bit he was lacking on ground units they're finally coming out now and it might be a bit easier to jump on it now but the moment has passed as the opponent's units are out of position they're gone there's still only four resonance with a lot of behemoths. Anytime you try to jump on top of it, always be a bit of a danger. All units are red, but the root the root goes on to those air units. Units are stuck a bit behind. Resonance are not are not seeing jump yet. The behemoths are so powerful. The absorbers try to get rid, rid of anything, but the rain of blood comes in, and Scruffy will be the grand winner of this fight with only a few units left. Come in, or did I call it too soon? As it was thrown, still alive in the sky. But those mass hunters are dealing. A massive amount of damage to go forward, getting healed by the Rain of Blood, the ultimate from his opponent. And they're moving forward on the Reds here. And the last round will die. And will barely survive, barely survives as the reinforcements of Hitlander coming in. Behemoth putting the Quill downs and nothing quite survives this. Both of them pretty close on supply and on army value. Hitlander uh, remaking some Wraith Bows and Behemoths. Is afraid of more thrones as thrones ever oh so powerful in those big engagements. Comes the mass hunters. Thrown going for a counter attack, but is gets, it gets detected by those mass hunters and goes in the worst possible place. Gets taken it out immediately, as he's a bit out of position. He's a bit out of position, but does have his pyre abilities ready for the next attack. And comes in sentinels, want to get on top of those blood of those uh, behemoths. It's a little, a little too late. In this phase, might be four for the hunter. Just need to care too much. He has a lot of base of his own, uh, while Scruffy is expanding all the way behind this. Getting all the base he wasn't able to get him for the longest time. Now he has an army he's happy with. He is going for it. And Jari is back out, giving a lot of barriers to units, helping them defend against some of those attacks. Uh, but the behemoths are so powerful. Uh, throwing those quills down, great frontliners for those mass hunters. And the attack keeps coming. Thrones of the Godhead. Ooh, the swords come down and kill a lot of mass hunters. And that might be the sign for Scruffy to retreat. But he doesn't want to retreat too far, or his behemoths might just get taken out. 
want to keep everything as close to each other as possible. Scruffy with more power once more. And they're getting a Citadel to get ready to retake this space. And he is close to out of fire now. We need to go back to those camps and keep mining that pyre. It's behind all of that Scruffy. What is his next move? What is he going for? More Behemoths. A few Wraith Bows to deal with those thrones. Uh, those thrones might just be an ultimate weapon that he needs to find an answer to. Behemoths are great, but only attacking the air. Those Mass Hunters can potentially catch the opponent off guard, and that's really his, his best solution. We'll see if it goes through. Mass Hunters going in. Want to kill that tower. Bitlander is ready for a full surround. Coming in from the back. The Absolvers and Separi coming in. The Citadel might go down. If you can kill all those units in exchange for that, that might be a decent trade. Uh, Scruffy simply going to go do the whole way around. Absolvers coming in from the back to dish a bit of damage. But Scruffy behind this, willing to come in and try and get a full surround. There's not enough units here for this round. But he did trap his opponent in, the, in, this, in this very vulnerable position. The Wraith was at the back dealing damage to those thrones. Thrones need to head back. Absolver sieging up and here comes the surround of his own for Scruffy. Scruffy moves in. The Castigators see those behemoths. Every attack has a bit of AoEs but those Quiddles are dropped but there's too many Absolvers. The Absolvers take care of those Quiddles immediately. The behemoths almost just cannon fodder at this point getting attacked by everything. The Castigators the Castigator cannon is just strong enough to keep going and Islander is pushing forward. Wants to kill a few of those behemoths before, before this push ends. Before he is forced to retreat and gets we get one and he gets the first one will he it survives all the behemoths survive once more let her be able to keep going and that's so many absolvers and absolvers are great at, keep, at keeping those uh, behemoths attacks not too powerful but of course as soon as you can see this and scruffy is ready to attack and all the quiddles coming down and with every quiddle coming down and so much damage coming up on top of everything but those absorbers are great at dealing with those small units the aoe from that machine gun doing a great job of dealing with it the throne is down almost no units left for itlander scruffy coming in from the back with with some more exicals and and the red harvest comes online for even more quiddle as it wasn't enough quite yet but killing all those absorbers is a task in itself however there's not much anti-air left for Scruffy, if for Itlander. He is re remaking some units at home, but what were they coming? More thrones, some Castigators. Yeah, Castigators are, are definitely a good choice with those Absolvers taking zone control. Uh, behind all this, both of them have a lot of bases. It comes down to these fights. For time, who can remax a bit faster? Itlander has a bit more income than his opponent. Uh, but Scruffy is at full supply at this point. He's jumping in, wants to get on top of it. There comes a deliver from evil from Scruffy. He does not want... From Midlander, wants to save as many as he can. Some of those hours will unfortunately go down. At least he got a few. He got a few of them out. And now it's for the next push. 100 supply to 140. But the army value is close to even. Uh, the behemoths are ready to keep moving forward. Oh no, that was removed. But it was only to this phase, the closest one, and it was right nearby with nothing left to defend it. He's coming in with his thrones with the Cascaders. The Cascaders getting attacked by his cows. They got caught out of position. Those poor absolvers. Trying to do as much as they can, but the thrones are more than enough to deal with this. At this point, if he's able to get the behemoths, the behemoths are stuck in the corner. Oh man, he's getting those behemoths. Those cascaders are doing insane amounts of damage. Scruffy has a lot of army value. At least takes out this base and maybe can run away after this. At this point, oh, the thrones going down might be enough. The cascaders are strong as the air, but not against the ground at all. The Xekal is getting on top of them along with the Quiddles and every unit. And there's only four... It's only four behemoths left, uh, and yeah, that's a, that's a low amount of behemoths behind this. Mostly remaking on anti-air units, and yeah, finally, Ilander, I like this, going for the counter-attacks now. Need to get some of his opponent's bases down, as his own bases are getting and getting erased from the map, one after the other. Uh, Omnivores are here, but static defense against four Separi. Separi might have the upper hand. They need to attack the Omnivores right away, though. They're getting attacking the, the workers, which... Might be the best choice, but the fight is still ongoing on this side. The Castigators coming from behind, attacking the Behemoths. Thrones jumping right on top of their opponent. Oh no, that's not where the Thrones wanted to go. They can throw some flame. They cannot throw their swords as well. And that was a very expensive loss for Midliner, who was looking so well not that long ago. But it just shows how quickly the game state can change. The three Behemoths at the top. <coughs> Separi at least take out this base at the bottom. The other base survives from the Separi attack, but it won't. But the next attack will be coming soon. Other units, sports, it's coming. Neither of them have as high as army value as they did before. 
Turns out to lower unit counts as most of the units have been have been destroyed. All the expensive ones are mostly gone. Figuring out how you want to keep going from here. Sapari killing the symbiote. And next push. Coming soon. Behemoth simply going for the pyro cast. Yeah, I guess that power. The Behemoth can keep moving forward. Sipari keep being annoying here, killing as many moats as they can. This base defending from the live war, so doesn't need to kill it. Gives a few moats. Uh, symbiotes, symbiotes run away. Those workers do not want to deal with, with the spearmen. And spearmen decide to keep going for the attack. Neither could keep expanding on the northeast. Now the whole army is pretty slow for Scruffy. It's one of the biggest advantages of Behemoths. They are big creatures that are kind of slow. And these three are undefended, but if they're not detected, he'll be fine with them. Oh, man. Can, no, the Sipari are very far from getting it. Uh, careful here, Lander. Don't want to attack under under a tower either. Oof. Bit of a bit of a move at the right place. Rain of blood comes down for Scruffy. That should be a move for it, Lander, to move back from there. All of the blood, all the units are getting healed 100%. Free behemoths at the back, and this fell last for a long time. Oh yeah, there you go. The rest of behemoths joining up with the army, and Scruffy coming in for a death push once more. I'll try to do his best, but that's a pretty big army. Here comes. Here comes the mass hunters, the swords of the godhead going in. Those six behemoths at the back are the story of the or the story right now. They're protecting from the high ground, and the first cast taker goes down. There's a few more cast here's where that came from. Resolver is dealing massive amounts of damage from the back. As Scruffy does his best to try to move forward, but after the quiddles are gone, all he's left is the mass hunters. And this army is not that bad to deal with it. But is it enough? Oh, the swords of godhead right on top of those mass hunters. Uh, Behemoth after another goes down, two of them down, but that's still a decent army left from Scruffy as Itlander, as Absolver at the back, keeps him alive as well as the tower. Majority comes out at this point to he with Heaven's Aegis to give a lot of armor to all the units, keeping him alive just a bit longer. And Behemoth so close to dying and one down, only three Behemoths left. Might have been a decent trade for killing off those Behemoths, but not the expense of losing your whole army, losing that very last Absolver. And the Throne at the end as well. No throne death at the end is probably the most painful part of this. Expanding at least, uh, getting a few bases back. Symbiote checking out the bases, scouting around. And behind this, where the unit? What are they planning next? They're both so low on supply. Only 65 supply for Itlander. While Scruffy is still at 4,000 and 102 to army value. What comes next? All the quiddles, all the kiddos. Okay, two more behemoths. I do like the castigators in this army, but he needs a few more absolvers to really dish out a deal with it. But his soul foundry is so busy building those castigators. Needs to be careful. Okay, here comes the counterattack. The right space, and there's not really any units here. The moats are coming. Moats are coming at the wrong time to defend this. Scruffy really splitting up his army. Wants to get some damage up everywhere. For this base is completely mined out, so... Or the long distance mining here. Moats went to, to the to mine from here, but all the bases are getting slowly mined out. Both of them want to expand, but might come down to a war of attrition. Scruffy seems ready for it. Those behemoths are so cost efficient with every single attack, getting them a lot more, a lot of damage for the Quito. They can front line as well as getting the damage out. North side, Mass Hunters just dealing the damage. And this is looking like the beginning of the end for Itlander. He's doing his best to. With a few units he has left, but he might need a few more than this. The Behemoths, Red Harvest coming in for free, even more free Quidos for Scruffy. As Scruffy keeps pushing forward with the last few remaining units of Itlander's army. At this point, seems like writing is on the wall for Itlander to be mostly out of this game. No more bases, no more economy. And Itlander is forced to GG out. GG with Scruffy taking the series 3-0.